Hey there, guys. Before I dive into today's episode, I want to make sure you know that you are invited to participate in this year's annual seven days of self-love challenge. It will be beginning on Tuesday, February 7th, and will run for, of course, seven days via Instagram and email. It's a combination of emails and also live videos that I host on Instagram over at Be Well With Stuff where I walk you through seven different ways that you can practice a little more of a loving attitude toward yourself, engage in self-love language and self-love practices that lift you up and support your wellness journey. It is a favorite of mine every year, and I know some of you have already enjoyed it. So I want to make sure that you get signed up and are ready for this year. So you can head over to bewellwithstuff.com slash self-love challenge. You'll just put in your name and email address so I know that you're registered. You'll get my emails and I'll know to look for you for those Instagram lives. When you sign up, you'll also get immediate access to my self-love playlist. And it is full of jams and anthems, some of which have been recommended by Instagram followers that can really set you up for your day. Maybe they'll be great to add to your workout, to your getting ready routine, or whenever you need a little bit of a pick-me-up. So you're gonna uh, pause this episode real quick Head over to bewellwithstuff.com slash self-love challenge. Get signed up so that you are ready to start those self-love reflections and practices with us on the 7th. Okay, let's get into today's episode. Hey there, and welcome to Be Well With Stuff, the podcast. This is the show for you if you believe that personal wellness can be an actively pursued goal and you're ready to tackle building healthier daily habits with a little bit of good humor, a little bit of grace, and a little bit of coffee. I'm Steph. I'm your wellness and nutrition coach and your host, and I want to make it really clear. You're not expected to be or live perfectly here. Lord knows I don't. After battling diet culture and then learning to navigate the world of wellness culture myself, I know a few things are true. One, it doesn't have to be complicated to be effective. Two, you are capable of creating a lifestyle you love. And three, you have everything you need to start doing that today inside your own beautiful self. On this show, we'll talk about nourishing yourself, moving your body, getting a good night's sleep, caring for your mental health, being in community, and maintaining day-to-day practices that make you feel good. I'm here to help empower you to create and maintain a lifestyle of wellness that gives you the strength, energy, and confidence to go after your wildest dreams. Today's episode is one that I am super passionate about because I'm going to address the topic of restriction versus abundance when it comes to your diet or the way that you eat. So restriction meaning um, when we cut back or we approach our diet or our eating patterns or our nutrition from a pattern of trying to eat less, trying to reduce, trying to cut carbs, trying to cut fat, trying to por- uh, cut portion sizes, trying to cut out snacks. And when we approach our the way that we eat from a place of taking away or restricting ourselves. I want to talk about this and what happens when we restrict both in our body and in our soul. Because So often, especially at the beginning of the year when this episode is originally airing here, um, I see people on social media and in my own personal life who truly would like to improve their nutrition. They truly have health goals or weight loss goals or weight gain goals. They They have some areas of their life that they're looking to change or improve. Maybe it's just energy goals, digestive goals, whatever reason might have you working on what you eat. But I would say that almost every time it's coming from a place of what I need to do less of in order to be successful. And I want to change that script with you a little bit today to um, what actually happens when we are restricting our body and what happens in our soul when we're restricting and how instead we can focus on being a little bit more abundant. So um, I'm going to run through first what a restrictive diet could possibly um, cause in your body. And then I'll move into what a restrictive diet might possibly cause in your soul. Okay, so when it comes to our body, 
The first thing I want to think about is um, that restriction may cause fatigue. If we accept the idea that food is fuel, and we know that calories are the unit of measurement for the energy that food provide us, provides us, then we can um, gather that when we dramatically reduce our calorie intake, we might actually be reducing the amount of energy that we give to our bodies. And this is especially true when so many people are trying to reduce their calories these days by cutting carbs, because complex carbohydrates are our brain's primary source of energy. And there will be more about this in the next episode here, more about specifically um, why you think you should be cutting carbs and what you actually um, should be doing instead. But I want you to keep in mind that when I really reduce my number of calories that I take in, I'm really reducing the amount of energy I give to my body. This might make me more tired and this might reduce the amount of energy that I have to to exercise, to move, to uh, work on hobbies, to play with your kids, whatever things you'd like to do that you need energy for, um, you're reducing that, you're restricting the amount of energy that your body consumes. So fatigue is the first thing to watch for. The next thing to watch for is nutrient deficiencies. If you're reducing your intake of food, that could potentially mean that you are also reducing your nutrient intake that you need, your necessary nutrient intake. And I'm not just talking about when you reduce calories, are you not getting enough protein or healthy fats or complex carbs, which of course we have to watch for those things. But I'm also talking about, are you not getting enough vitamin and mineral intake? Or are you not getting enough antioxidants or other healthy plant compounds that support healthy body function? Um, so for example, if you say, um, I don't need an afternoon snack today, you know, I had an apple and some peanut butter with me and I was going to snack on that, but I'm going to skip it to save calories. You're also skipping out then on the fiber that's found in those foods, on vitamin C and E, on magnesium, and so much more. So when you are consistently skipping snacks or reducing food items without planning for adequate nutrient consumption, you might end up with big risks in the long run that may not really be worth saving those extra 200 calories at the time. So definitely be mindful that if you are trying to cut back in certain areas or that if you do need to change your calorie in versus calorie out balance for some sort of health goal, you really want to be mindful of, am I still getting all of the nutrients that my body requires? The third thing that may impact your body when you um, have a restrictive diet is fertility. And I know I have a lot of women, women listeners, and I also know, and you know, that I am not some sort of fertility expert. I'm not here to give you a lecture on that or to pretend that I am. Um, and sometimes we know that weight loss does improve fertility. And we know that weight gain improve fertil improves fertility um, if someone is underweight. So I'm not here to give you advice on that, but I am here to say, talk to your doctor about what is best for you. But keep in mind that nutrient deficiencies and extreme weight fluctuations can have huge impacts on your hormone levels and on the way that your reproductive system functions. So if you are a woman of um, childbearing years who is interested in having children or interested in at least maintaining a healthy cycle, and I know a lot of my listeners fall into that range, um, be really careful if you are trying to over-restrict your diet to make sure that you are still getting the nutrients that all of your body systems need to be healthy. And again, definitely talk to your doctor, check your blood work, all that good stuff. Um, but be mindful that nutrient deficiencies may lead to um, difficulties in other areas that we're not really thinking about all the time. The next point about restrictive diets is that um, when we restrict calories and when we then therefore lose weight, we um, may also be losing muscle mass. And when um, you are reducing your muscle mass, you also can slow down your metabolism, which goes against what most of us are trying to do, which is maintain a healthy metabolism um, and help us to maintain a steady weight that is a good fit for our bodies. When you reduce the size of your body overall, you reduce not just fat, but you do reduce your muscle mass. So dietary restriction without a careful look at your protein intake and your strength training plan, such as resistance training on a regular basis, might actually hurt your metabolism in the long run. So that's something you want to be very careful with and try to work with a professional on if that is something that is of concern. Um, lastly, I will point out that 
Experts from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition believe that approximately 80 to 95 percent of restrictive dieters who are dieting for the intention of losing weight, lose weight and then gain the weight back. And there are also health risks, many health risks associated with extreme weight fluctuations. So knowing that restrictive dieting might make someone drop 20 pounds, but the odds are really good that they are going to gain that weight back or even more. So if your long your long-term plan or your long-term goal is healthy, comfortable, sustainable weight management, restrictive diets might not be the way to go on that. Now, while we know that restrictive diets may have a lot of impacts on our physical bodies, I don't think that I would be a good health coach if I didn't also talk about the effects on our soul when we are overly restrictive. The biggest thing that I often see with clients is that feeling of increased lack of control around food, especially foods that we are trying to restrict. I don't know about you, but I don't like to feel out of control. I'm actually striving on a regular basis to be more in control of the choices that I'm making and the way I respond to my body and the way I respond to my environment. But being overcome by cravings um, or learning to ignore my own hunger and fullness cues because a diet is dictating when I should eat and what I should eat is not part of a plan when it comes to maintaining my own control. Um, Lots of times I will see clients who have been following meal plans for so long or who have been cutting or restricting for so long that they now don't understand when they're actually hungry, when they're actually full and how to tell that. And they also tend to lose control. And you start to hear people say things like, oh, I can't have cookies in my house. I can't have cookies in my house because I'll just eat them. Well, suddenly if we've restricted for so long that something, um, that a food comes into our house and suddenly has this kind of toxic hold on us, there might be something to look at there. There are other ways to manage cravings and to manage um, the intake of, you know, more nourishing food versus less nourishing food without creating uh, black and white rules or without completely depriving oneself of something. I do that with co- um, in coaching relationships a lot is kind of navigate that space Um, to help find control around food. But we do know that when we increase restriction, we lose control. I don't want to lose control. I just can't stop thinking about that. Like, I don't want to be out of control. That really feels damaging to my soul. I want to be in control and making active choices. The next thing regarding soul is that um, overly restrictive diets can start to damage your relationship with food. Um, And we see that show up in people who are overly sensitive around food. And that might mean um, eating something a lot once it becomes available, because we're not sure when we're going to get it again. It may include um, involving cheat days or cheat meals in your, um, into your meal plans or in planning them into your week, planning days to cheat on a diet, um, which therefore brings in the idea that like some foods are, um, you know, um, respectful and some foods are foods that we cheat with or are have a, an unrespectful relationship with. Um, I think cheat meals might be a whole topic worth talking about. So you can let me know if you want me to dive into that a little deeper as to why I personally feel really strongly against cheat meals or cheat days. But it also tends to make us think about food in like an all or nothing mentality. Like either I um, am so happy with my choices and I love the way I'm eating today or I ate something I'm unhappy about and now today is a wash and I'll have to start again tomorrow. Kind of makes us um, think about food in that black or white way. It also can sometimes connect um, or, or can lead to people connecting their own morality as a person to particular foods. Like if I think that vegetables are good and cookies are bad, when I eat vegetables, I'm good. And when I eat cookies, I'm bad. And you for their food, right? There can be choices that are more nourishing and less nourishing, but you are not innately good or bad based on the food choices that you make. And when we have these really restrictive diets that try to say, no, you can never, ever eat that, um, it, it starts to feel, we start to feel a little guilty when we do make that choice. Um, and guilt is not a feeling that really belongs in the space of nutrition, Okay. 
You are not bad if you eat a cookie. Maybe that cookie is not helping you get closer to the health goal that you had in mind, but it was a choice that you made. Enjoy the flavor of that cookie and then move on with your next best choice. Something also think about with restrictive diets and our heart and soul is that they can give us this kind of fail or seed, succeed mentality when it comes to our health, kind of similar to the black and white thinking around food or eating. But a failure or success mentality comes up if you can't stick to a plan, if you've restricted a lot and then you are hungry or you have a lot of cravings or a life circumstance comes up like a party or an occasion or a stressful day. And then if you feel like if you feel like the diet isn't working then or working for you or your goals, you might feel like you failed at it. If you are trying to stick to a really strict regimen and then you have this craving and you go off, you might feel like you failed. Or if you follow a restrictive plan, you are have a goal to lose weight, you lose weight and then you go off of the plan and you gain the weight back afterward, you know, how does that make you feel? It sometimes can feel like if I follow the plan, I'm succeeding. If I'm off the plan, I'm failing. If I lose weight, I'm succeeding. If I don't lose weight, I'm failing. And I just think this is such a dangerous space for our head and mind and heart and soul to live in when we're really just trying to nourish our bodies and be healthy. Okay. Um, every, every single food choice you make is a chance to make another good nourishing food choice every single time regardless of what any piece of paper or any plan says. And the last thing that I think um, can be kind of damaging when it comes to restrictive diets is that restricting means less, less food, less of the things that you maybe like, less of certain nutrients, smaller portion sizes. And it can start to make us believe that we deserve less and you don't deserve less. You deserve more. You deserve it all. And the goal here is nourishment. It's good health. It's abundance of nutrients. It's an abundant mindset, an attitude of self-love and feelings of worthiness for just being a human being and just having energy for our, the things that light us up, being worthy of a wonderful, full, rich, abundant life, including abundance of food and nutrients just for, just for being a human. And if our focus is continually on eating less, on cutting out, on taking away, on following other people's rules, how does that align with that growing, abundant, loving version of of ourselves that we're working on? In my opinion, it doesn't. And so we around here in this space and I in my coaching really emphasize um, approaching nutrition from a place of nutrition from a place of nourishment approaching nutrition from a place of abundance over restriction. And we can see the way that that fuels our body, puts us in control, gives us energy, treats ourselves with loves, allow for um, failure or mistake to be just kind of a natural part of the process that we pick up and restart again. And it just feels so much better and so much joyful and so much more loving as a way to approach what we eat. I hope that this helps you to start to shift your mindset out of restriction and into abundance, out of diets and into a nourishing way of eating and a nourishing lifestyle. Again, we're going to be talking more about abundance and nourishment as a form of self-love in that seven days of self-love challenge that's beginning on the 7th. So don't forget, if you haven't already, to head over to bewellwithstuff.com slash self-love challenge. Um, and sign up so that you're ready to join us. Also make sure you're following on Instagram at Be Well With Steph. If anything in this episode stood out to you and you want to chat about it, I always love your feedback. You can drop me a DM on Instagram or you can go to bewellwithsteph.com slash podcast and there is a comment or suggestion box, also a place you could ask questions. If anything struck you and you want me to elaborate on another episode, I would really love to do that. I am so looking forward to hanging out with you guys for the seven days of self-love challenge. And again, here on the podcast next week, be well. Thank you so much for listening to Be Well with Steph, the podcast. When there are a million things that you could be doing, I appreciate your choosing to hang out here. 
and I am proud of you for continuing to work on your own wellness journey. I invite you to head over to BeWellWithStuff.com for the details from this episode, my blog, upcoming events, and lots of other resources. If you enjoyed today's show, I'd love to hear from you. I'm Be Well With Stuff everywhere you like to hang out on social media, so come on over and say hi. Until next time, my friends, be well. Be well.